Uh, so that's the, the logic to think through. Is leverage with your property better than leveraging into stocks? You know, last week we talked about leveraging the stocks, margin and stuff. I'm not a big fan of it, but you know, there, there are so many different kinds of leverage. You can leverage with shares, which is margin, or your Tiger account, your Mumu account, very easy to do margin on there. You can leverage with a car. You can leverage business, business loans. All these are a few percent in terms of interest. But property right, is the only one that, you know, your interest cost is one plus percent only. So I do think offhand, uh, it being a lower amount is definitely a better place to leverage for property than into stocks. This one plus percent, is it due to the interest rate? Yes, interest cost. Mortgage uh, to be specific. So the, the reason maybe I can share also why property mortgage is so low. Because property, you know, the, the cycle is very slow. It goes up and now very slow. Whereas now you see like Alibaba can drop 5%, 10% one, one night. But if you buy a yes. house, it will drop, but it can drop very slowly over a few years, which means uh, banks are, few, are feeling more assured. They are willing to take that as a collateral. That's why the interest cost is so low. And if you imagine, if the cost is one plus percent, your real return is 2%, you're already positive. But mm. if you borrow on shares, 3%, 4%, if you make 2%, you're actually still losing. So property is a much safer alternative than much. your stocks. Yeah. Yes, correct. And uh, not only that, you can borrow a bigger amount. Eh. So you know, right, more, more people make money on property than stocks. Quite simple mm-hmm. because the quantum is big. That means you can borrow more. The, the asset class is secure. Uh, for private properties, your loan to valuation is 75%. If it's HDB loan, you can borrow up to eight, up to 90% actually. Yes. So net net, uh, it is true la, that if you borrow through property, your quantum is bigger, it's more stable. It doesn't mean that it's common going up, but this is the reality of it. The quantum is bigger and it's more stable. And the value also isn't that volatile, right? Like yes. you won't cost one million, then next day your house costs five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. Unless the house burned down. <laughs> the one the different case. Uh, then you should have a mortgage interest to it. Uh I, I yes. guess property investors, right? or anyone thinking about property investment, the, the bigger concern is whether can, can they get the property rented out, tenanted out or not? Uh, it's not really the borrowing. The borrowing is very good. It's whether the rental competition they understand or not. Because, you know, Singapore, there's going to be so many new condos completed in the next few years. And then we are losing a lot of expats, which means the com- tenant competition is just going to skyrocket. And if you can't find a tenant, then you are going to pay the mortgage or whatever interest costs with it, no? uh, out of your pocket, eh, which makes it very difficult. Yes, agree. So all things being equal, right? Uh, maybe the logical thing is you max out your property loan to invest in the stocks with cash and not the other way around. Uh, so that's the, the logic to think through. Mm. And uh, you know, uh, on our main channel, on YouTube, I'll be sharing something. that how, Why I borrow 150000 for my property, I'll be sharing a financial hack upcoming in the next few weeks. La. If you have a question, head on to our YouTube, The Average Person Podcast, and leave it there. We'll try to help you answer it. And as always, smash the like button. It helps us keep going.